What's up, YouTube, and welcome to part three of my series highlighting different houses from different eras and what it was like to live in them in Clark County, Nevada. We're at the Clark County Museum, and this is the Goobman House from 1931. This home is going to be an example of what it was like a little bit before the World War II times. You can see the stonework and the different woodwork where they would use materials being used local to the area. Let's step inside and check this out. This is the home of a businessman from... Uh, the 1930s. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and be sure to check out the other homes. This is an amazing museum. All right, so PJ Goodman moved his family from Eli to Las Vegas in the late 1920s and brought the home in 19, or excuse me, and bought this home in 1935 from Jake Hagenson. Goodman was known as an early gaming businessman. In 1929, Goodman and three other partners actually opened the Boulder Club on Fremont Street, which ended up costing about $60,000 at the time. The Boulder Club was, interestingly, the first club to have a neon sign downtown. It was open before gaming and alcohol were legal, so it would have just been officially a club with no drinking or gambling, which everyone doesn't really believe that that was true. The club closed around 1960 after a fire and then was sold to the Binion family and used to expand the Horseshoe Club, which is now known as Binion's. You can see this little door. This is where they will put tables or a card table or chairs to play. Just little vintage touches that you don't see anymore. This also highlights the African-American help. Unfortunately, around this time, they said African-Americans were being hired to help clean up around the house, but I'm not sure when the hired help and the slavery lines blur, so... I'm just going to kind of call that what it is at the time. And then you can pan over and you can just see like the pastel colors. You just don't see stuff like this anymore. Just even the quality of the pieces and just the look of the pieces it just looks vintage. You know what I mean? By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm doing a series on all the videos in this museum, the Clark County Museum, which only costs $2 to get in, by the way. And there's a, a street called Heritage Street, and they have all these different houses on it. So this is one of them that I'm highlighting. By the way, I think that this house, although it is built in the 30s, it's themed to the 50s. So I did want to make that note. Um, you might see some of this stuff that reminds you of the 1950s, and that would be why. This kitchen is so cool looking with the, again, the pastels, the yellow. Look at the old fridge. It makes you want to go inside and grab a snack or something, you know? It's absolutely amazing. So anyway, back to Goodman. In 1941, uh, Goodman purchased Tool Springs, which is now known as Floyd Lamb Park, and expanded it to create a dude ranch. Obviously, a dude ranch was a divorce ranch where individuals could rent rooms for six weeks while they finalized their divorce. And that was a big popular thing in Nevada in the early, uh, mid-1900s, 1950s. You can see this kitchen area. It's a little sign talking about that. But yeah, uh, Las Vegas was very popular for divorce, and then it ended up becoming popular for weddings, and still to this day is known for weddings. So again, this home was restored to a 1950s uh, time period. The kitchen is most noticeable. You can see that was modified in the 40s or 50s. Um, so they actually used a sears color guide they said from the 1950s to create authentic color schemes that best suited each room and the majority of the furniture was donated uh, or purchased at thrift shops So this add-on room just features different things of the era. Uh, these are obviously different TVs and different things that would play multimedia. These are pictures of what it looked like in Las Vegas, downtown Fremont Street, which at the time was the center of Las Vegas. And then we're going to go over and we're going to check out this all-green bathroom. If this doesn't give you a taste of the 1930s, 40s, or 50s, I don't know what does. I just love how when you look at it, it looks like someone is getting ready to go take a shower or go start their work day. It just really gives you that feeling. Look at the mint green uh, toilet paper. All the way down to the, uh, you're gonna see it in one second. 
But the flamingo floor mat, I mean, how Las Vegas 1950s is that? Let me go over to the bedroom. This is a pretty spacious bedroom. Again, it just looks like the family's going to just pick up and start their day. But this place is awesome. Again, if you're enjoying this video, please check out my other videos. This is part three. So I have part one, part two. I think there's going to be a part four. There's just a bunch of different things to see at this museum. And so the best way to do it is to break it down and feed it to the public that way. This is actually going to start wrapping up the video. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Okay, so that was the Goodman House from 1931. This is the 1940s. This is the 1912. It's a print shop we haven't gone to yet. This was a little motor area. Looks like this one. It's from 1933. Let's see what this one from 1924. Over here. And then this is the chapel. So we're gonna skip this dedication area. Check out the chapel or the house. The house. Check out the Babcock Wilcox house. Boulder City from 1933. So all these are kind of like wartime houses. More or less. Every time it's creepy. No. Copyright. <laughs> Well, this house is a lot more spacious, I feel like, than the others. It's Except this, <laughs> this is a kind of tiny uh, dining room area, but when we go into the kitchen, you can see the, you can see the ice box and all of the kitchen utensils that would have been used at the time. Looks like a steam area, steam room to do the laundry. China cabinet. These, these, uh, these mannequins are creepy. A little closet. Go into the bathroom. This is a deep bathroom, you know what I mean? Right? Like, that tub is far away. A lot of space. This kind of style house doesn't feel so old to me. It feels a little more, uh... I mean, it's old, but I feel like I've seen houses kind of like this as growing up. I'm also from a small town. But to me, this feels like the most modern feeling house. The last one was kind of modern too, but the stuff inside of it, this feels a little more up, up to date. I don't know, not that it is, but I hope you know what I mean. So during this time, there was some auctions going on for land, as you can see in Boulder City. A lot of stuff was just kind of happening, like the Hoover Dam with the government and the, the, the railroads. It's, it's kind of like a lot to break down, you know, in, in, in small sentences, but basically what would happen is like the government would come in and buy things or the railroad would come in and buy things and use it till it's profit, until they didn't see it to be profitable anymore and then sell it off, yada, yada, yada. And then if the city would last, the city would last. and. You know, in this case, Las Vegas became something crazy. If you're still watching this, please like, comment, and subscribe. Again, this is a 1930s house, mid-1930s. Kind of is giving me 60s feeling, though. Notice there's no TVs. But, and I mean, once you see things like how they're doing the laundry, and it's just pretty spacious. This house also, I'm assuming, would have been downtown near Fremont. And they have a nice screen, uh, screened in the front area. And that wraps up today's video of part three. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And look out for parts one, two, and more.